everybody. I want to remind you of the different ways that you could send your tithes and your offering. You could do it through texting. If you don't have access to Google Play or the App Store, just send a text to 601-273-4609 and send it to the word GIVE. After that, you'll receive a text message back and then just follow the simple instructions, the simple steps, and you're all set up. Also, you can use the Tidely app. Just download the app from the Google Play or the App Store, and you can set up the amount that you want to give, and you can send it to Springs of Praise World Outreach Center, or you can mail it to Post Office Box 549, Crystal Springs, Mississippi, 39059. If you want to drop it off at the uh, church office, the office is open Tuesdays through Thursdays from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And as always, I want to thank you for watching this program. Okay. So earlier this week, what happened? I was in pastor's office and I said, what do you want to do for pastor appreciation? He says, I don't want to do anything. I just want to eat. I said, well, you know what? We can arrange that. We can arrange food. We can do all of that. He goes, and I also want a guest speaker. I'm like, okay, what's the budget for the guest speaker? He says, it's nothing. I said, I guess that's me then. <laughs> so that's how I ended up here. I said, you know what, Pastor, for, for Pastor Appreciation? Yeah, with, with COVID going on, I'm sure it'll be a small crowd. I won't be nervous. It'll be fine. And then we're grabbing chairs from the Family Life Center. So I, he, I said, okay, I, I'll do it. That's no problem. He goes, but here's what I want, Gene. I want you to pray for the vision of this church. I said, you know what? I think that, that would be a good thing to do. I think that would be an excellent thing to do. And he said, but Gene, I also want you to do it in 10 minutes because I'm going to be hungry. <laughs> so he has given me the task to, to share a vision that I have for the church. Don't, Tom, don't start yet. I'm getting there, Pastor. Your, your stomach can wait just a little bit. You know you ate a big breakfast. That woman cooks good for you, you know. And so we have, we have 10 minutes to do this, and we're going to do it. Um, but to make sure I did it in 10 minutes, I wrote it down verbatim. Because there's, there's times that I can ramble on. And so we're going to get started. Because you know what, church? The vision that God put on my heart, it, it, it's, it's, about, it, it's about time. It's about time for this church. It's about time for this church to drop into the war zone. You're going to the war zone. soldiers, right? Mel Gibson with his, with his Marines, they spend three quarters of the movie, three quarters of the movie defending a hill against the enemy. Now the Marines were able to, to keep the enemy back, but it was at a great cost, right? The, the headquarters uh, was continually sending reinforcements. If you haven't seen the movie, they kept sending reinforcements, but the Marines were still taking heavy losses at this point. They're totally surrounded. Now, after two days, after two days of defending their ground, headquarters radioed to the Marines to let them know we are not able to send any reinforcements. Now for the Marines, the end seemed near. It seemed near to them. And, that, and, and um, as the sun set that night and the darkness came in, the enemy, the enemy spent that night moving closer to the Marines. With this plan, at daybreak, we're going to go and take out the remaining of the Marines. But you know what? Something unexpected happened that night. The Marines decided that they were not going to go down this way. They knew what was going to happen. They refused to go down this way. And when the sun rose, the Marines went into a full-scale attack and took the enemy by surprise and drove the enemy back into a full retreat outnumbered and outmanned the, the Marines won victory that day. And this, this is, the, this is the vision that I want to see for this church. I want to see Springs of Praise go into a full-scale attack. We want, I, want to see, I want to see us start attacking the enemy and put them into a full-scale retreat. We need to drop into the war zone. What is the war zone that I'm talking about? The war zone is on the outside of these doors. 
The war zone is the community beyond these walls. Right? There's a poem that I want to read for you guys, and it's titled, A Prayer for the Future. And it goes like this. It says, Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we, when we, uh, when we arrive safely because we have sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, with the, when with all the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life, having fallen in love with this life. We have ceased the dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we allowed our vision of a new heaven to dim. Church, this poem, this poem is a warning against complacency. Complacency. Complacency that keeps us inside the church walls. Or as with Peter in Acts 10, it, keep, it keeps us on the roof, dreaming about the next potluck dinner. I think there's a danger I think there's a danger in this church of holding our ground and keeping the gospel to ourselves. We have become complacent. We have become comfortable in our situation and in our surroundings. And for whatever reason, we just aren't getting outside the church walls with the news that Jesus saves. What happened to that? We have seen baptisms on the decline in churches across America. As we huddle together as a people of God. In Acts 10, what did God tell Peter? God told Peter to get off the roof, get out of the house, and get on the road again with the vision of a mission for salvation for the lost. Church, what I'm saying is this, that we need to do a better job. We need to do a better job getting outside the church with the gospel. Because like Cornelius, there are good people out there that think they got it made. And there's others who are truly searching, but they're lost. We have a lot of lost souls outside this building. They need to hear the good news. And we are the only ones that have that good news. It's time for us to get dropped into the war zone. You know, you want to know what we have? You want to know what we have? Yeah, I want to know what. Do you want to know what we have? Do you want to know what we have? Yes. Do you want to know what we have that they need? We, we, what we have is the good news that they need, right? We have a God. This is what we have. We have a God that by grace we have been saved through faith. And it is a, this is a gift from God and not to be of our own doing. We have a God that sent his son to die for our sins so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We have a God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also have a God that says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Church, we have a God who gives us, who, who, who goes with us to fight for us against our enemies. And get this, we get the victory. He gives us the victory. And when problems and issues, and we're all dealing with this stuff, when problems and issues of this world tries to push you back into a corner. What do we have? We have a God that gives us the strength to attack and chase that enemy down into a cave on a snowy day and put him back into a corner that he belongs. You know, and why? Why can we do this? Why can we give chase? Why can we chase down the enemy? Why can we chase down the problems and the issues? Why can we chase down all of this anxiety? Because we know that if God is for us, what? Who could be against us? That's why. That's why we can do this. Now, some of you might think, Gene, can we really do that? Absolutely we can. We can do that. We can do all things through him who strengthens us, right? God tells us that in this world, there will be tribulations. But you know what else he says? He says, take heart, because he has overcome this world. So, the future of this church has to go beyond these four walls. We have to love our neighbors like Christ loved the church. Church, we have to be like Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus. We do. But we also have to be busy like Martha, doing kingdom work. That's what we should be doing also. In 2020, we have seen the world fall to anger, fall to bitterness, fall to hatred, and fall to fear. 
But this church, this church isn't a fearful church because God hasn't given this church a spirit of fear, but of what? A power and love and a sound mind. That's what this church has. And so we can do this, guys. We can do this. We can drop into the war zone because other people, other people's souls, Guys, other people's souls depend on us to get to get the love, the mercy, and the salvation message of Christ out to them. They need us to do that. Has the truth set you free? Well, don't you think that you have family and friends out there that needs to know that the truth can set them free also? Come on. It's time. It's time to drop into the war zone. Church. It's time to start small groups again. It's time, church, to start fellowshipping again. And it's time for bigger prayer meetings again. Right? It's time, church, to put on the whole armor of God. Again. We've taken it off. we put it in a closet. It's time to put it back on again. Because we need to be able to stand against the schemes of the enemy. The schemes of, of Satan. The enemy has been scheming against this church for years, and we all know it. And so it's slowly been moving in, in the darkness, trying to creep up on our position. And you know what the enemy thinks? The enemy thinks this will be the end of Springs of Praise. 2020 will be the end of Springs of Praise. But that's, that's when we drop in now, and that's when we break out of these walls, and we go out to the streets and we cry, Jesus, here I am, use me. We need to drop into the war zone. We need to take back what Satan has stolen. We need to win back the ground that the enemy has taken and let the sun shine through again. Once we have won this race that has been set before us, then and only then we can, we'll be pulled out of this battlefield by God. God's going to pull us out, knowing that we have done all we could. And you know what? God will get the glory. And... He'll give us the victory. Amen. Then we can hear our commander in chief say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So let's bring to our family and friends the good news of Jesus while we still have time. Are you with me, church? Yes. It's, it appears more than ever that time is short. We need to let's pray together. Let's fast together. Let's march together in a war zone. Jesus is coming to pull us out of the war zone because God will give Jesus the final order when he says, my son, it's time. Bring my soldiers home. Father, I praise you and glorify you for this day, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for goals, Father. Jesus, you had a goal. You had a goal and you, you, you spoke it. You spoke it in, in the beginning of your ministry that you come to heal and deliver and set free. You made that plan. You had a vision and you followed it. It wasn't always a good time. And our vision for this church is not always going to be a good time. But it's a vision that works. It's a vision that, that, that reaches out to the community. Because if we're not reaching out to the community, what, who are we to sit and judge others? Father, I thank you for this. I thank you for pastor and pastor's leadership. Father, I, I thank you for Sister Karen and her leadership, Father. As we continue to move forward, this church will move forward. This church will step out of its comfort zone. And this church will leave its complacency. And we will step into the community again. And we will take fight to the, to the enemy. And we will set them back into a full retreat, Father. As we see the community grow and we see this church grow and the love of God grow, Father, we just praise you and we glorify you for all these things. I thank you once again for the privilege and the honor to come before this body. Father, let us be warriors, a warrior for Christ. And may we all say, use me, Lord. Use me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woo. amen. All right.